So Cathedral View is being built, started now, um, and it will be uh, delivered in August of 2019 for the 1920 academic year. Quite a lot coming in and out of the 19th. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were trying to do cathedral. Well, we wanted to do one big project each year, but we've got two coming out at the same time, which we could because hopefully we'll generate this continuity income that we're talking about at Globeworks, and also we'll get a big profit um, element coming out of the cathedral view because we're developing uh, predominantly to sell. Globeworks is a bit different, um, although it's worked out quite well, you know. Mm. One thing that's just that's sparked my interest or put my ears up is from what I'm seeing of the projects you're telling me about, you've got a constant like roll of money that comes in and goes out. Yeah. There's no yeah. it doesn't seem like you're going right, there's a project when that one's done we pay one no. back. It's literally you're Roll just it. finding money all the time, so and you have to repay people, and, and so there's always... And we're always very flexible with our investors. Mm. So when we started off, I thought, well, we'll just ask an investor for 100 grand, and this is the length of the project. And a lot of people would say no. So we've learned to be, um, okay, we need a minimum period, which is like a year, um, and then what I always try and do is a minimum period with a rolling notice. Because most people don't actually want it. Any first investment... They're just testing you out to see if you do what you say you're going to do. Um, so we've become a lot more flexible in our loans. But we've got, you know, what Sue predominantly and my team is responsible for is forecasting and tracking, you know. We've got these loans coming out. We're talking to this amount of people. These loans are agreed. These are in discussion. And we've always got to do more than, you know, than we need because investors are always fall out. Sometimes you're dead certain someone and then they fall out. I had an incident this week where... Um, it was a confidence issue, actually. I agreed an investment with an investor, and she had, she was really happy. Um, and then she kind of got the wobbles a bit. I understand it's a lot of money. Um, but with this investor, two of her friends had invested with Prosperity and been repaid with their interest. So I, I said, look, you know about these and these other people. And um, I went through everything with her again. And I said, look, ring such and such and such and such, and I gave him the heads up that she was going to ring and did, and that was all fine, you know. So that's when kind of, when you pay back interest on the nose, and you pay back loans on the nose, every time you do that, you build confidence in the community of investors. And quite a few investors go on to be introducers, and we do pay introducers uh, who have been investors. So, you know, and the best introducer is someone who has basically invested with you. There's not a better one. That was really, really gold dust. When you can say to someone else, look, I've invested my money with this company and it's been repaid with the interest, that's as good as it gets from yeah. you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, it is a complicated forecast. So not only you've got, the, you've got your company costs, which you know, you're charging through direct management, you've got all of your SPVs, so you've got to be raising money for each SPV, see who's coming in and out of each SPV, and you've got the cost of the SPV. You know, with UX, you know, that's a huge exercise in terms of raising money, in terms of the cost, you know, where we were talking at, you know, a cathedral view that is about half a million pounds, you know, times that by four for UX because it's a big, big piece. So, you know, the, oh, everyone has to be paid and that has to all be forecast. Um, and things, things happen as well. Oh, there's this cost that we've got to pay and it's not forecast. The, the more time you can spend on your forecast, um, the better. And Sue's an expert with the forecast, so I get Sue to work closely with our accountants, Kingston Smith, who are brilliant, by the way. Um, a, another point is that we wanted to use a, a signpost professional. So there's lots of good small regional accountancy firms, a Kingston Smith and Middlesized London-based accountancy firm, but when you're talking to funds and to um, you know, equity investors, if you say so who your accountant is, Kingston Smith, it just ticks the box. And, you know, uh, and they've been good. Um, so Sue lies with Kingston Smith, and we have a bookkeeper who uh, who pretty much works full time for Prosperity in my own property thing. So although he's not a direct employee of Prosperity, Mark Howard, um, he, he pretty much is, you know. And also we have a, a financial controller who's kind of uh, on our advisory board, who's really really good. So he's not full time with us, uh, but he kind of helps us put our financial strategy and forecasting together. So that's what um, White Box and the Lloyd tell me about. That they, yeah, they're not 
accounts and they said it's completely transformed their business when they got an SD that basically came in one day a month to start off with for a thousand pounds a day. Yeah, similar to us. Right, so that's an SD controller. Yeah, no. for us it's a financial controller. Right. Um, it's kind of like, well, I, in my mind, he's like financial director. Yeah. A chap called William Grove, really, really good. Uh, fantastic, actually. Uh, and he came in yeah. and he turned the kind of the accounting. It basically, we got him to review our financial systems, which for an entrepreneurial company, you won't be surprised to guess, are pretty made up as we went along. Yeah. Um, although we had Mark Howard, who was a fantastic bookkeeper, so in terms of the records and everything, it's all bulletproof. It just wasn't put together right. And I couldn't describe to you how the right way to put it together was. But but with the you know, the way that they put it together and the kind of the checks and balances that they put into place, uh, and the forecasting. Because I had a forecast, it's kind of like roughly this says how much, but no, we, we go down to a real detailed forecast whether we have to do withholding tax for individuals, you know, um, costs, potential investors that might come out. We've always got a rolling model of investors who have confirmed they're coming out and not coming out. So we know kind of for the whole of the rest of this year what our forecast is as much as we can. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, there's some development costs which shift all the time. We're literally changing our forecast on a daily basis. So you know, when might we get planning at UX? Well, if we get planning in March, this is what it means, or if we get planning in April or, or whatever, you know, and also when do we get forward funding for Cathedral View? Will it happen in May? Will it happen in June? Will it happen in July? Because when you pay out your investors, most of them want to just come back into your scheme. Uh, or probably at least two thirds to three quarters, roughly, go, yep, yeah, that's great. What are you doing next? Pay it out or pay the interest out and put the load into something else. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that you don't have too many investors, so you're not paying out too much of the loan, too much interest. So you always need to carry more than you need. Right. So if you're a really, really lean business, you'd only bring in capital when you needed it. But we've, we've got kind of a buffer that we want to, and it's not kind of an agreed buffer, but I always carry enough cash that when, oh, this thing's come up, we can just satisfy it straight away, even though you have to pay for that, you know, et, you know that capital, but yeah. it works. Yeah, okay. So that's Cathedral View, and then when did you, is it the next one and the current one, UX, is there anything in between Cathedral View and... No, no, so UX, we pretty much started talking about UX um, at the end of 2016. So we worked all, all year 2017 on UX. Um, and, you know, obviously we're still working on it. So um, what's <coughs> been the, the, the disparity in the amount of time you've spent on UX? What are the, the main reasons? Because you've just got submitted the planning, haven't you? Yeah, 2018. So did you say you started in 2016? At the end of 2016. Right. So um, a lot of time is spent kind of negotiating the vendor, the site to do the deal. And then we had an option, um, an exclusivity agreement, which we've continued. Um, and then a lot of time has been spent by Ed and his team of working up the plan, get, you know, the plans. There was framework planning in place for UX, which you know about. Mm -hmm. um, but basically the plans for UX was just a ready sell scheme. And we wanted it to be a build to rent scheme. So we basically scrapped all of the plans. Uh, we've redesigned it from the ground up, Ed and his team. Really great job they've done. And that's um, amazing. Yeah, it will be amazing when it's finished. Um, so, yeah, he's worked you know, principally with Assail and Deloitte as the lead contractors, Assail being the architects and Deloitte being the planning consultants. And, I mean, Assail is self proclaimed be best built around architects in the UK. Ed took have been very, very good to deal work with. Deloitte, um, they put together the framework planning for that part of North Manchester. So the good thing was that Manchester City Council actually employed Deloitte and Deloitte came up with, well, this is what Manchester City Council want in this area. <laughs> and it's the same people that are advising us. So there shouldn't be any breaks in the kind of, you know, and we haven't tried to push the envelope with UX. So we haven't, we've said we'll deliver to the scheme what Manchester City Council want, as long as it's commercially viable, which it is. Yeah. So, you know, we, we are, we've put in exactly what Manchester City Council want. So they're going to support the development, um, and um, hopefully we'll get planning, you know. Uh, 